Sorry, it's taking me a while to get going because uh, I actually have a ton of slides to get through. Uh, my name is Paul Murphy. I'm the CEO of a company called Clarify. Um, we happen to do some of what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, this isn't an ad at all. I'm actually going to show you uh, a bunch of information about uh, products that we use, products that compete with us, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So um, let's get started. Now, this is a slide I can only put up in Texas, um, and it's, it's, really the, it's really meant to illustrate the fact that um, uh, we are creating a ton of audio and video data, um, media data. So this is the first, I'll, I'll skip this slide, but uh, this is a graph of the volume of data that's been created since, uh, since basically since recorded history. So that cave painting I just showed you is really the first instance of, uh, of uh, recorded data. So that's 40,000 BC. Internet gets invented in 1969, and on this exabyte scale, we don't start seeing the, an uptick until 2005. Um, and now we're having these, these volumes of data that are being created are doubling every two years, and that rate is increasing. So who's, who's causing this problem? It's, it's people like us. It's, it's developers who are giving people tools that make it really, really easy to create audio and video files, um, and cloud companies, of course, and then the users aren't helping. They're getting these phones and these, uh, these cameras, and, uh, and they're recording just a, a ton of this stuff. And then as developers, we're stuck having to deal with it, um, trying to figure out how to deal with it. So in the old days, we, had, uh, we just had text, and uh, it was encoded in a way that was really easy to manipulate. Um, we could do all these really nice things with it. We could even find things in it, which was great. Um, and uh, sort of upper, lower, et cetera, et cetera. So um, every time I put up a picture of Yul Brenner, just think, et cetera, et cetera, in your head. If, uh, if you, you don't have to say it. Um, but uh, if, you, if, if you've seen The King and I, you know he says that a lot. Um, and uh, he, also, he also plays a bunch of other sort of heroic figures. Um, I like Yul Brenner. Um, <laughs> All right, so let's get, back to, let's get back to our problem. So first of all, so when we have a lot of, uh, a lot of media, um, as developers, we feel like total losers because what are we going to do with it, right? If you've got video, wow, well, you can play it back. That's cool. Um, if, you have, uh, if you have a bunch of audio, same thing. You can put up an audio player, um, and uh, the audio player might let someone skip ahead, go back. Um, but uh, if they want to find something inside that recording, they're stuck. So uh, here's what banks do. Uh, you know banks record all your phone calls with them. And uh, every once in a while, somebody does something wrong. And, uh, and the regulators show up and say, hey, go find, that, go, go find all the recordings where somebody talked about LIBOR. And what the banks do is they hire rooms full of people, um, usually a bit older than these girls. Um, and they put headphones on them, and they make them listen to thousands and thousands of hours of recorded phone calls to find the stuff, uh, the recordings that they, the regulators want to hear. Uh, is that scalable? No, obviously not. Um, and, uh, and what, we're talk what we're here to talk about today is how we can go about automating, automating some of this. So first of all, we're going to talk about extracting words from, uh, from audio. And uh, there's, there's two ways of doing that. One is by having humans transcribe them, and the other is by having a machine transcribe them. And, uh, and we really care about, uh, about APIs, so we're going to look at APIs. And there are APIs to human transcriptions. Um, there you go. Uh, so there are a few of them. There's uh, rev.com, casting words, verbalize it, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, uh, verbalize it is actually a translation service, um, which, is, which is pretty nice. But they, of course, happen to do uh, transcription as well. And, uh, and for all these APIs, we're just going to look at some of the characteristics. Uh, by the way, I'll make these slides available. So if uh, you'll, you'll have all these resources. And there are others. These are just examples. Um, so, so for some of these APIs, I'm just going to quickly go through some of the pros and cons of using them. Uh, so we'll start with Rev. So Rev has a, a pretty standard REST API, which is really nice. Um, the only problem is that the only helper library it has is in Ruby, which isn't so great for us. Um, and then and the other thing is that they, they, they force you to send weird information, like the audio length. Now, since they're charging you for the length of audio you're sending, you figure they're, they're, they're going to figure that out, right? They're not going to take your word for it. Um, so I don't, I don't really understand why they're, asking, uh, why they're asking for that information. But overall, it's a good API, and I give it a B. Um, there are tons of automated transcription APIs. 
Google has one, AT&T has one, Nuance has one, VoiceBase, Speechmatics, et cetera, et cetera. Um, are they any good? Well, some are, some are really good. They're just they're standard REST APIs. Anybody in this room should be able to use one without too much, uh, too much effort. Uh, some are clearly afterthoughts. Somebody had a product and uh, someone walked in and said, hey, we really need an API in this product. And, uh, and then they hired someone who didn't know anything about APIs to build it. Um, some of the APIs return uh, just the words. Some of them return the words with timestamps. Some of them return the words with timestamps and uh, confidence scores. Uh, if, you, if you know signal processing, you know you never get a yes, no answer. You always get a, well, there's a 70% chance that it's yes. Um, so that's what those confidence scores are for. And, uh, and some of them include a bunch of other data that, unless you're a speech expert, is going to mean absolutely nothing to you. Um, and, uh, and, and really, the, the, the entire range here, A to an F. Um, I mentioned Google, for example. They have, a, they have an API. Uh, I've talked to the people who maintain it. I said, how long are you guys going to keep this around? They said, oh, we don't know. Um, so <laughs> to me, that's a big minus. I like, I like for my APIs to stick around so that uh, when I embed them in products, I know they're, they're going to be there tomorrow. I hope my clicker's not running out of battery. Okay, so now we're back. We're back to where we were, right? We've got, uh, we've got sound files and we've got words so we can do all the things that we used to be able to do, uh, which is pretty great. But, uh, but hang on a second. Um, audio isn't just text, right? So it's, it's text. Um, oh, hang on. Sorry. So audio is text, um, but it's also a timeline. Um, so it's text and time and, uh, and some other stuff. So taking this one step at a time. So let's, let's look at the timeline aspect of it. So timeline is just a sequence. So we can, I think all of us can deal with a sequence. Um, so we can stick a, gosh, so I'm going to switch to keyboard here. There we go. Uh, so we can, we can use two tuples to, uh, to represent timestamps and words, or we can use three tuples if we want to include probability. So no problem, right? Uh, but uh, there's more in audio. There's also emotion. There's identity. So identity is, you know, who, who's, the, who's that speaker who's saying that? Um, when, when is someone saying that? And then there's events. So you might have a door slamming, you might have a, a, a fork hitting a plate. Uh, these are events that uh, some people care about and they're all inside your audio or your, your, your video. Um, and there's other things. We get rid of him. So it turns out that there are APIs that allow us to handle this as well. So there are emotional APIs um, that allow us to extract emotions from, uh, from audio. Uh, the first one here, Beyond Verbal, just, uh, I think they just raised a three and a half million dollar A round. So VCs are taking this kind of thing seriously. Uh, there's one called Moodzel that I looked at a few months ago and I just went before this talk and uh, took, took a look at it. Um, well, I'll, I'll get back to that in a second, but let's look at the Beyond Verbal API. Um, unfortunately, you have to ask for a key, which always drives me crazy. And they don't let you see the docs till after you get the key. So you do a bunch of work, and then maybe you find out that you actually don't like it. Um, so I give that a C minus. Is that me? Someone else? Uh, the Moods of API um, uh, was, was an option. I just went to look at it. And they've pivoted. And uh, they're now a service that allows you to save your emotions after you're dead, uh, which is, which is <laughs> kind of weird. <laughs> So uh, that happens, it happens sometimes. All right, give them an F. All right, so now let's go look at identity. This is a really hot space because a lot of people want to be able to unlock their house by uh, you know, saying my, my, my password is my word or something like that. Um, and there's, uh, there's a company in Europe called Ignisio that does this, uh, Voice Vault, One Vault, Nuance. Um, and very quickly, oh, there's more of them, God. Um, so let's just look at, very quickly, Ignisio, uh, no API, F. Voice Vault, no self sign up, uh, and their docs are PDF. Uh, that drives me absolutely bananas. Um, still, we'll give them a C plus because at least they have an API. One Vault, no API. Nuance, Nuance is the 900 pound gorilla. Um, if you know Nuance, the, anytime, anytime a company shows up that threatens one of their businesses, they buy them and kill them. Um, so uh, I went to look for their API. They have, I found some white papers, I found some case studies, I found benefits pages videos about the API, but I couldn't find the API. Um, so I give them an F minus. 
All right, so uh, recapping, lots of options for extracting words from audio. Emotions, uh, a bit tougher, but there still seems to be ways of doing it. Identity, lots of nothing. That's not entirely true. There are, there are APIs out there that let you, uh, let you extract identity, but for the most part, you're going to be dealing with low-level tools. You'll be wrapping your own, uh, your own code around it if you want an API. So let's go back to uh, and, and sort of look at how, how we'd go about doing this. So we have an audio file. We do a transcription either with a human or a machine. We get words. But, but there's a problem that you might have noticed earlier. You get words, but uh, sorry, one, one, one other thing is that your audio might contain speech, but it might also contain music, it might contain noise, and it might contain absolutely nothing. So the problem with that is that if you send music to a speech rec engine, if you send it to a human, they'll know it's music and they'll, they'll be able to do something with it. If you send it to a speech rec engine, it's going to try to do something with it and you'll get back, you'll get back a transcript and it'll be a transcript of junk. Uh, if you send it random noise, same thing. Uh, the confidence scores might be low, but believe it or not, you'll still get words back. Um, and, uh, and, and this is, this is the thing I pointed out earlier, right? That, uh, you, you're, these words, this text can be in multiple languages. Well, if you go and, and look at these speech rec APIs, you have to tell it what language something's in. But uh, imagine you're a bank and you've got, uh, you got people, let's say you're a Swiss bank, so you have people speaking in German, French, English. Um, you have no idea what they happen to speak in when they made a phone call. Um, so that's, uh, that's, that, that's a bit of a problem. And, uh, and it's a problem that we solve with something called classification. Classification is really, really important. Um, when you get an audio file, you, 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 need to, you need to figure out what's in it before you can even do anything with it. So one, the first thing you need to figure out in many cases is the recording source. Was, uh, was this file recorded off a phone or was it recorded in a TV studio? And that makes a difference because the acoustics are different, the language that people use are different. Um, and uh, if you're recording off a, a phone line, of course, you're, you're missing a bunch of information because uh, all the high and low frequencies are gone. Uh, a hundred years ago, they didn't think they were necessary. Um, also, the content type, right? Is it is it text? Is it is it speech or is it uh, is it music? Uh, the language is obviously important, and the domain. The domain is something a bit more subtle, but uh, but it matters when you're doing speech processing, and it matters if you're doing any kind of uh, processing. Well, if you're doing uh, text processing after you've done the uh, the extraction, um, if you've got doctors speaking about a medical problem or mechanics talking about a car problem, they're going to be using completely different vocabulary. And knowing the domain can make a very big difference in the way we go about processing this stuff. So very quickly, let's, uh, let's, let's talk about video, because I, I meant to cover both things in this talk. Uh, don't have a ton of time left. Uh, video is obviously full of data, because you've got the audio, and you've got images, and you have motion. Um, so you can combine the motion and the images, and that's how you get your video. Um, that's, uh, that's the good news. The bad news is. Uh, Somebody had to put up this slide again. Um, but really, what I, what I want to illustrate is that when it comes to video processing, this is about where we are. Um, this is more about where we are from a commercial perspective. So from a, uh, from, a, from a scientific perspective, sort of the stuff coming out of the labs is really interesting and gives us a really good idea of where we're going to be able to go in the future. Uh, and I'm going to quickly talk about some of that, even if, even if right now there are no APIs that will allow you to get to some of this stuff. Um, and I'm just sort of generically going to say uh, under development. So word recognition is the first thing I want to talk about. And this is actually really, really cooked. This is the most, the, the easiest thing to get to. Uh, using optical character recognition technology, we can, we can go and extract words from videos and then use those as indices into the video. So for example, if this talk is videotaped, which it may or may not be, and, uh, and you see a picture of the screen, we can see, we can find the words word recognition um, in that part of the video. The next thing is object matching. So you have a video, uh, or you have a bunch of videos, a library's of video, and you want to find every instance of Big Ben. You can, uh, you, can, you can hand an algorithm a picture, just a single picture of Big Ben from any perspective, and uh, we can pretty quickly go find all the instances of Big Ben in the video. Um, it's, it's, there, are, there, there are some cases where this kind of thing is really useful. Let's say you're a brand, you wanna, you're, you're Heinz, and you want to find all the ketchup bottles in a, in a video. Um, that's the kind of situation in which uh, you'd, you'd want to use this technique. Um, generic object recognition, it, it's, think, think, of, think of generic object recognition as the equivalent of speech recognition. So you're trying to find words. You have a dictionary of 200,000 words. Well, 
having a, an ontology of 200,000 objects, but in fact there, you might want to have a lot more than that, um, and, uh, and extracting all that information in anywhere close to real time just isn't feasible at this point. Um, emotions is something that we're doing a ton of work on in the, in the video uh, arena. Uh, you've probably seen demos on the internet uh, extracting emotions from people's facial expressions. Identity is another one. Um, the government's really interested in this one. And, uh, and of course, events. Events in video usually mean something slightly different than in audio. It means things like uh, zooms and pans, that type of thing. Uh, so a few things that I want, to, uh, I want to point out, that a lot of this data is complementary. So we have words in video, we have words in audio, two completely different sources. Uh, same thing with emotions. One comes from the, the waveform, another comes from, uh, well, from the, the, the video waveform, the person's facial expressions. Um, and also, uh, emotions are buried in other ways in video. So lighting and, uh, and of course, music can, uh, can contribute to the emotional content of a video. Um, and, then, uh, and then another thing I wanted to, to, to very briefly mention is sometimes we can use different signals to extract the same data or to, or to, to help uh, another algorithm out. So with speech recognition, people are using lip reading to improve the accuracy of speech rec. Um, they're also using three-dimensional Doppler to, uh, to, to the Doppler effect to figure out uh, three, the th in three-dimensional space how someone's face is moving. And that can give you very, very accurate uh, understanding of what the person is saying. Um, and and uh, as you've probably guessed, there's no standard way of representing any of this stuff, right? Every one of these APIs has a different data representation. And if you're trying to find this information in multiple dimensions uh, or extract information in multiple dimensions, you're going to have to deal with, uh, with this lack of, uh, of standard, standard representation. So is there a solution? Yeah, of course. Um, well, there's lots of solutions. There's, there's lots and lots of APIs coming out. There's lots of technology that's bubbling its way out of research labs, out of academia, and, uh, and into API space, which I think is really, really exciting. Um, classification, as I mentioned earlier, is, is really critical um, for us, for developers who just want to be able to do something uh, with this media. Um, and over time, we're going we're gonna to start having a coherent way of talking about this stuff, of, of, of understanding the relationship between these various dimensions. Um, and that's something that, uh, that my company, Clarify, is working really hard on. Um, so we're, we are building uh, an API to audio and video, and our ultimate aim is to take all of these different dimensions and present it in a single coherent way to the development community. So that's it. Thank you very much. Um, I think we did it on time, and if you have any questions, uh, you've got about five minutes.